Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. Hello and welcome to this episode of Macro Sutra. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor at The Print. And this time we're going to look at something really interesting about whether our consumption, India's consumption, all of us, are we going and buying things at the same level or higher or lower than pre-pandemic times? It's about four years since the lockdown happened. It happened in March 2020, but we're in Feb now. But we still, it's a great time for us to see whether we fully recovered in our consumption patterns and to look at all of this data from the production side, consumption side and company side. We have with us Radhika Pandey, Associate Professor at NIPFP. She's gone through all of it. She's written an article and she's going to talk to us about it now. Thank you so much, Radhika, for joining us. So now, Radhika, first we start with the GDP data. The They came out with advanced estimates uh, for the 2023-24 year. What does that say about how consumption has been? Yeah, so our main analysis begins from GDP data because GDP data, if you see for the entire year, it showed a robust growth of 7.3% right. overall. Uh, but if we look at the components of GDP from the expenditure side, like mm-hmm. consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports, there we see that investment is doing very well. And that is understandable given the government's thrust on uh, public uh, investment. It's uh, growing at a consistent double digit growth. Right. But where the concern lies is on the consumption side, which is the uh, variable private final consumption expenditure uh, that posted a growth of 4.4%. And that's okay. an estimate for 23 uh, 24. And uh, if we look at the entire uh, year, the base year series, the 2011-12, mm-hmm. we see that this is one of the lowest growth, leaving aside the COVID year, this is one of the lowest growth in consumption seen in the 2011-12 base year series. I so uh, it is a cause of concern and it, it's an aggregate number. We are just getting one number for right. growth rate of uh, private final consumption expenditure. So it is therefore uh, useful to see where is the source of stress? Where is the demand lagging? Is it a broad based thing or is it like some sectors are contributing, some sectors are lagging behind and that is a useful exercise as you rightly pointed out at a time when we are, you know, four years ahead of COVID. So Mm -hmm. what what is the situation now? Right. So now on the production side, uh, what does the government data tell us about the production of consumer goods, whether it is uh, durables, non-durables or items of mass consumption. Correct. So, uh, but we'll go like step by step. So let's start with durables. Yeah. So uh, let's first understand that the constituents of IIP, the index of industrial production Mm -hmm. uh, from the use based side, there are things like primary goods, capital goods, infrastructure and construction goods, intermediate goods and consumer goods. So these are the five constituents of index of industrial production from the use based classification. There's another classification, which is economic activity based classification, which is mining and quarrying, manufacturing and electricity. That's an manufacturing is the main part. But when we talk about on a more uh, nuanced level, we Mm -hmm. look at the use based classification. And there what we see if we just compare the, uh, you know, index numbers, IIP is an index number. If we compare the index numbers of uh, pre COVID year, that is 2019 20, April to December, because we have data for this current year only from April April to to December, December. we don't have the full year because the full year we haven't completed yet. Yeah. We are in February. IIP comes with a lag of two months. So we are in February. So we have data till December. Right. So for the ease of comparison, we take April to December of the 
फाइव ईयर्स ट्वेंटी सी हियर इज दैट यू नो द बिगेस्ट परफॉर्मर द मोस्ट इनकरेजिंग परफॉर्मेंस वी सी इज इन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर गुड्स वेर ऑफकोर्स या सो वी हैव सीन दैट यू नो द इंडेक्स नंबर हैज इंक्रीज फ्रॉम समवेयर अराउंड वन थर्टी टू विच वॉज इन द प्री कोविड लेवल एंड नाउ इट इज वन सेवेंटी टू सो इट्स अ बिग इंक्रीज एंड सिमिलरली वी ऑल्सो सी इम्प्रूवमेंट इन Uh, primary goods we see improvement in capital goods so we do see improvement not at the same uh, pace as the construction goods but yes the index numbers the overall cumulative index numbers for 23 24 are higher as compared to the pre covid by a significant amount by a significant yeah. amount but when we look at consumer goods we see that you know during the covid time there was a sharp decline in the index numbers right. understandable but even now there we do not see a significant increase in index number in fact they are hovering around the same level as the pre covid level so that is the consumer goods production you right. know the overall consumer goods production and as we said that this is uh, analyzed on two counts consumer durables and non durable mm-hmm. durables are things like fridge tv air conditioner anything which is non perishable so what they call white goods white goods yeah. yes so that is included under durable goods production and non durables are uh, food items mm. non food items so that is non durables and if we if we want to see where is the source of stress from the production side we see that you know durable goods production is even lower than Then, the pre covid level ouch. in 23 24 wow so while overall we are seeing that consumer goods production is on at similar level as pre covid the difference is that consumer non durables have surpassed the pre covid levels mm-hmm. and we can talk about the you know constituents you know we'll, yeah we'll get to that but at a broader level the consumer durable goods production in 23 24 the first 9 months april to december in terms of index number is lower as compared to 1920 <laughs> so when the production is lower it reflects on the demand side of course. Know, the production is a lagging indicator of demand if there is less demand production will take a back seat right. so that is what we are seeing in terms of the uh, iip consumer goods production that actually is quite concerning then yes. that the that demand for these white goods is lower than what it was pre pandemic right which means that uh, production also is that that is uh, quite a concerning data point yeah yes uh, but on non durables you said that it's it's somewhat higher it's it is higher uh, it is higher than the pre pandemic level there mm-hmm. was a decline in the covid year but it's higher than the pre pandemic level uh, but again what is important is to look at the constituent because right. you know uh, iip uh, uh, non durable uh, goods has a weightage of 15% in the overall iip okay. and durable goods has a weight of 12% so it's important to look at the constituent you know what has happened to sugar what has happened to pickle all these right. things you know those are non durable uh, uh, goods and also looking at things like the personal care looking at what's happening to toothpaste you know these Lotion, mass consumption soap. items yes yeah. so what's happening to these the demand for these items and that is what uh, we can understand if we dig deeper one level and not just stop at looking at the broader level which you have done for us yeah. thankfully yes so that yes so that is what we have done and we you know we can uh, see where exactly is the source of uh, stress and that gets corroborated further if we look at the companies you know the companies that are selling those products their financial yeah, performance that also we will get to yeah. so let's talk about the mass consumption right. items so salt pickles creams yeah, lotions right. yes, yes. or things like biscuits correct so here you know particularly 23 24 this year has been uh, has not been good for these mass consumption uh, items and you know there's a term which is called hpc yeah. home and personal care items which include things like soaps shampoos lotions and toothpaste and so on mm-hmm. and there we see that you know there is a contraction in in the uh, in fy24 as compared to fy23 oh. so while there was an improvement stark improvement in the uh, after covid but in 23 24 again there is a uh, s- stress and that is quite understandable given that inflation levels are higher absolutely so uh, those people who are uh, uh, you know wh- whose incomes are lower they have to first meet their uh, essential consumption right. so consumption is therefore skewed towards essential items and therefore those items which are discretionary in nature they tend to suffer and mm-hmm. that is what is visible uh, if we look at 
at some of the non durable goods we look at food items and we look at non food items right in terms of food item thing like salt pickle these are some of the main items which are of mass consumption these are jam. staples yes jam uh, biscuits there we see that production is lower in fy24 as compared to fy23 so that is on the food side people are actually using less salt less Yes, less salt. Wow. So that is something. Uh, it is a cause of concern which has been raised uh, at industry associations also that there is a cause of concern there. And also, if we look at from the non-food side also, there mm -hmm. is uh, this uh, source of stress in some of these HPC items right. that we uh, spoke about. So what we are seeing is a kind of. Uh, a dual trend where mass item consumption is suffering whereas those who have income there is there is an improvement in urban demand there is an improvement in the uh, consumption of premium products premium yeah, but right. uh, mass item consumption uh, 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 hpc those are the items whose production is lower as compared to last year and uh, uh, th there is a year on year contraction in these items right. so that is visible in the non durable uh, goods side so this is actually again concerning because several times now we have talked about this dual trend yeah. where there's a premiumization that's happening but right. then at the bottom end consumption is not picking up and that doesn't seem to be changing it seems to be holding steady that there is the premium category that's doing better but the lower end is is yeah, actually so that, doing worse th that is visible from the iip data very clearly right. it's a official data it's for everybody uh, to see that you know if we dig deeper and look at the non durable item we look at top 60% items uh, or if we look uh, you know those items where there has been a contraction mm -hmm. there are several items of mass item where we see contraction so it's not that all the items of non durable items have reported contraction but yes as we are talking about these are some of the items which are uh, consumed at a mass level and they are seeing a, a decline in production in uh, this year right. first 9 months as compared to the first 9 months of last year okay and so now i know a lot a lot of you are going to question that i myself have pointed out various flaws in the iip radhika yeah. has talked about it uh, we've pointed out flaws in gdp but there are several other indicators that are right. also showing that there's a consumption slowdown now uh, coming to the demand side the actual direct demand side instead of looking at supply and seeing how that reflects demand in actual demand one of the most useful parameters is passenger vehicle sales right and uh, radhika has looked at that as well so now could you tell us what that data shows us yes yeah, so passenger vehicle is again a uh, uh, is a broad item is a right. broad uh, category which includes uh, passenger cars vans and multi utility vehicles so mm -hmm. these are the three broad constituents and there again if we compare the trajectory of passenger vehicle sales as compared to uh, pre covid level we see that it has improved there's a substantial improvement in okay. the sales of passenger vehicle uh, overall broad overall, category right. but again what is driving this is the MUVs the uh, multi utility I vehicle. see the higher category higher category and I again there is a big jump from somewhere around 8 lakh to now 2 million units that are being sold in FY24 in fact this calendar year from January 23 to December 23 has been one of the best years for passenger vehicle sales and that is mainly driven by multi utility vehicles I see. passenger cars have also picked up but the pace of uh, the jump in uh, MUVs is much higher and a lot of factors could be attributed you know increase in the disposable incomes mm -hmm. of people uh, getting loans at comfortable interest rates still interest rates are lower as compared to the 2018 19 uh, regime right. you know e even despite increase in uh, uh, interest rates some people transitioning from uh, lower end cars to higher end cars higher they are borrowing and they are buying so that is mm. also uh, happening but overall we see a big jump in the sales of uh, multi utility vehicles but also another point is that we are seeing an in now at least for this year we have seen an increase in the two wheeler sales also so it's not just the okay. muv two wheeler sale so the picture is not that gloomy overall it is a mixed picture that you know for some item like we spoke about basic food items and the uh, uh, hpc category we see and uh, you know contraction in uh, production right and it could be due to demand slowdown yes but yes there are some 
problem with the iip data that we have spoken about absolutely. but and therefore it needs to be corroborated by uh, other variables other absolute variables like these uh, variables like car sales and uh, and that is not something that is questionable we are seeing that uh, mm. multi utility vehicles the pace of increase is much higher than the entry if level if you look cars. on the roads you will see most of the cars are now yeah, multi utility and, and, vehicles and the companies are also now introducing more of these uh, more models of these sport right. uh, vehicle the sports mm-hmm. uh, utility vehicles. because there is where the demand lies so right. we are seeing that shift in uh, the overall portfolio of the auto vehicle uh, segment so can we then divide it into two that demand for products that possibly can be bought using a loan hmm. that is going up yeah. but these fmcg products yeah, you don't take a loan to buy soap correct, right like correct. so the demand for that yeah. is going down yeah so one is those people uh, who are very sensitive to high food inflation Mm. they are the people who are suffering and uh, the item that are mainly purchased by them those items demand is suffering so right. that is why we are you know uh, if we look at it's very interesting to look at the you know analyst presentation of companies all these fmcg companies yes. you know we can look at what uh, is britannia saying what is itc saying what is hindustan unilever saying right. and all of them are echoing the same concerns that you know they are seeing a kind of dualism where uh, uh, premium products are uh, faring well urban demand is doing well whereas rural demand uh, they want to see it higher but till now and they have done a lot of things they have started selling things which used to come in bottle in a sachet also they have done a yes. lot of things to uh, uh, you know to ensure that there is a cost cutting and therefore improvement in sales mm-hmm. uh, curated products are being sold for rural uh, population a lot of things are right. happening to you know step up the rural sales uh, but as of now there is a kind of divergence between urban demand and rural demand okay and uh, now relating to that uh, we have a set of questions from gautam I'll, i'll ask all of them uh, together because they're all related so he asks uh, with a more than decent gdp growth rate as you mentioned uh, in the beginning consumption is not following this trend is it fair to assume that a major contributor to this is rising unemployment and high inflation such that income levels are unable to cope also can you please explain why this issue of consumption not picking up is higher in rural areas than urban areas is it due to higher food inflation and finally what steps can the central bank or the government take to address this yes so consumption is not picking we saw in the yeah. uh, uh, gdp data and it is uh, more prominent for why it is more prominent for rural that also we spoke about because again going back to gdp data if we remember from the economic activity front agriculture is not is performing not well, well. Uh, there was a decline in kharif production there is uncertainty about uh, rabi crop production mm-hmm. there is uncertainty about weather events so and all these things are you know impacting consumer sentiments so uh, some way they do impact consumer senti- sentiments and they uh, tend to hold back their demand right. so high food inflation subdued performance of agriculture these are the two factors that have uh, resulted in lower rural uh, sales demand. and yeah. yeah rural demand and therefore uh, rural sales and uh, what can uh, a, a government do government whatever steps they can do from the side of rbi is already doing from the side of monetary policy to right. control inflation so the most important uh, uh, policy response is to uh, bring down inflation mm-hmm. and again here we are seeing a divergent trend you know core inflation is down core inflation is right. uh, below uh, 4% so the main problem is with food inflation and food inflation requires not only monetary policy intervention but supply side intervention right. from the fiscal policy front so whatever can be done by the government to uh, address the supply constraints uh, increase imports where there is a, a shortage not ban export all these things need to be done bottom line is to bring about a control in food inflation because once that is done and there is a sustained decline in food uh, inflation that mm-hmm. will help in improving consumer sentiment and uh, will help in uh, you know improving demand because once food inflation is high then people tend to uh, limit their pro- uh, consumption of discretionary items because they feel even in future the food prices will it, be high uh, yes so yeah. that is uh, 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 there, there is uncertainty mm-hmm. and that gets reflected in consumer uh, sentiment they tend 
tend to buy uh, uh, like for Maggie, there's this Chotu pack that comes. Right. So they tend to buy all these small things. And uh, even if volumes pick up, there is we do not see an increase in value. So that is something that uh, yeah. needs to be uh, seen. And the other thing what support could be provided is through Manrega. If there is a... Right. Uh, if we do not face, uh, do not have adequate employment in agriculture and allied sectors, at least to provide support, allocation of Manrega should be uh, increased and that has been done and which is a welcome development from 73,000 right. crore to 86,000 crore. So all these things are some of the important steps that can be done. So mainly if food inflation is controlled and if agricultural gross value addition picks up, we will, we hope to see improvement in the uh, rural sales. And a large part of agriculture, the performance has to do with the monsoon, yes. which is not in the control of either the government or the RBI. Right. So uh, if next year the monsoon is stronger, we might actually see a yes. proper turnaround yeah. in uh, in uh, rural demand. Uh, so now we also have a question from Karthik. I don't think he was asking about uh, consumption in particular uh, with regard to this, but we can peg it to consumption. He asks, what structural changes are needed in the tax system? So we can mold this to be what changes are needed in the tax system to encourage consumption. Yes. So, you know, one thing that can be done is at least some of the tax rates can be linked to inflation. For example, the mm. standard deduction. Right. right now, the standard deduction is 50,000. Yes. Now, there are these uh, demands and that is, I think, a valid uh, point that at least some part of that should be linked to inflation. Uh, and that will help in, uh, you know, providing some comfort to mm. those uh, people who have been honestly paying their uh, taxes and that will help in uh, boosting consumption demand also. So one thing is to rationalize tax, bring down the tax, which is not that an easy step that the government can take at this point when it's aggressively targeting a, a fiscal consolidation roadmap and it's, you know, only uh, a year back it has introduced these changes. It's right. not uh, uh, very fruitful for the government to bring about frequent changes, but at least this change can be done that uh, the standard deduction part can be linked to inflation. Right now, it's mm -hmm. a it's just an absolute number. Yeah, it's a, which set, is, number. It's a yeah. set number, which is the same number for many years. So, mm. if that can be linked to inflation, that will help the uh, household, at least the middle income, the lower uh, household, and that will help in boosting consumption of the mass items. So, that I think is one thing. The last time it was changed was in the interim budget of 2019. Piyush Goel increased it from 40,000 to 50,000. Yeah. And that's pre-pandemic, it's been so many years. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. So there is a there's a need to review this entire framework of uh, standard deduction, whether mm -hmm. it's an absolute amount or whether it should be pegged to inflation. And I think if it is pegged to inflation, it will definitely help in providing, help in boosting consumption, particularly of uh, uh, mass item. Uh, the other thing is generally from the structural point of view, what can be done to, you know, boost the share of direct taxes? Because, right. you know, right now, uh, if uh, indirect taxes uh, are they tend to be generally regressive as compared to income taxes so right. uh at a structural level, in the medium term, the policy uh, framework should be geared towards increasing the share of direct, direct taxes. taxes. And that is happening. In fact, mm. if we look this year, the share of direct taxes has increased and uh, uh, policy steps should be taken to further increase so that the regressive component of taxation comes down and that will ease the burden of taxation again on the lower and middle income. Uh, so population. they have more disposable income. They have more disposable income and that they will help in uh, boosting consumption. So I think these are some of the steps that can be taken. Okay, so uh, there you go. The consumption story is actually not that great, uh, especially if you come to consumer durables. The actual production of these items, the 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 value seems to be lower than even pre-pandemic times, which obviously is not a great place for us to be in. Consumer non non durables is higher than pre-pandemic, but is lower than last year which is also not great. But on the other side, if you look at vehicle sales, that seems to be growing quite strongly this calendar year uh, or uh, the last calendar year saw very strong sales. So that's a heartening sign. What seems to be happening is this divergence between urban premium demand, which is strong and rural demand and the lower end of the income spectrum, 
which seems to be struggling yeah uh, i mean just w- one point if i can sure, yeah absolutely. so you know on the company's quarterly financial performance side also right. the fmcg companies reported a very modest increase in sales oh, for the december yeah. quarter but uh, auto companies reported a, a jump and this was october december was the festive season also right. so even from the financial performance side we see a mixed picture where hmm. uh, you know non durable items food products those companies that are uh, into food products they are not doing that great but the other uh, constituents construction goods are doing well uh, auto uh, companies are doing well right. oil companies are doing well so we are seeing a uh, mixed picture and it gives us an impression about the you know the key drivers of growth in the economy yeah absolutely and by by key drivers i mean consumption is a strong driver of the economy and we need it to be firing on all fronts it right. can't just be the premium segment that is driving consumption we need rural demand to pick up there are various things that the government is doing can do the rbi is doing things some of it has to do with weather but this is a matter of concern and something that i'm sure policy makers are looking at with a lot of concern with a lot of interest but on that note that's all from us thank you so much for watching